So the topic is really about looking at wealth and materialism from an Islamic perspective. And I would like to correct some misconceptions about it. So let me begin with a question. Can a Muslim be wealthy and rich? The answer to that, brothers and sisters, is an absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. In fact, being wealthy and rich can be a cause to support the Muslim community and the people at large and to serve your deen even better and become more pleasing and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, we're going to go through the whole content about how being wealthy and having being resourceful is an excellent encouragement in the Quran and Sunnah. I begin with a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, "Al yadu al uliya khayr min al yadi al sufla. Wabda bi man taoul, wa khayr al sadaqat ma kana an zahri ghani, wa man yastafif yaufahu Allah, wa man yastagni yughni Allah." The meaning of the hadith is as follows: The hand that gives is better than the hand that begs and receives. In other words, financial independence is better than financial dependence. The Prophet peace be upon him goes on by saying, and start with your dependence first in who you give and spend on. Abu Huraira said, Ya Rasulullah, who are, my, who are our financial dependents? He said, your wife, your children, and anyone who is dependent on you for their livelihood. You start with them first from your wealth, before anyone else. He also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best type of charity, listen carefully, is from what is left over beyond one's financial needs, meaning your savings and profit. Which is the best charity? After what you spend on yourself, your wife, your children, your dependents, whatever's left over, that you don't need for your family and your livelihood, your shelter, your clothing, your food, your security, and so on, left over, the best charity you can give is from that. Why? Because there's a priority. Dependents take priority. And being obliged to spend on your dependents is more beloved to Allah. Because no one else is going to spend on them but you. Also, spending on your dependents is an obligation which is also considered a charity. In fact, it is the best charity of all charities. What is obliged is the best charity of all charity. He goes on, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is able to not need to ask from others, Allah will make him unneedy. You stop yourself from asking people for loans, asking people for whether it's money or anything else, don't go into that habit. Avoid it as much as you can. Allah says he will make him unneedy. Then he says, whoever is satisfied, whoever is satisfied with what they have, Allah will bless their wealth and their wealth will increase. Or it also means whoever relies on their abilities, Allah bless them with and seeks financial independence, Allah will assist him in his seeking and his efforts. So what have we understood from this? A Muslim should be financially independent as much as they can. If they're not yet, then to seek it and to work and not sit and wait and use justifications and excuses that Allah is going to provide them without moving. And also not to beg and ask and get out of that habit. And also that your family and dependents are more worthy, come in priority, and it is haram to neglect them even in the name of charity to others. And that the best charity is to your dependents first, and then the next best charity is what's left over of your wealth to others. And that obligation towards your family is a charity you get rewarded for. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu says to the Prophet, peace be upon him, who are those you said are the dependents or messenger of Allah? And he said, your wife, 
so that your wife does not say, my husband, you, are, you have neglected me, so leave me. I can't live with you. Or your child says, oh father, you have left me barren and vulnerable, where do I go? These are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah says in the Quran in Surah number 4 verse 9 in Surah An-Nisa he says وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا and let them fear those who, if they would themselves leave behind helpless children, they would surely have been fearful on their account. Let them then fear Allah and make the right statement. What does this verse mean? Allah is telling us that there is a legitimate fear of poverty upon your children and your family if you were to die and leave them behind with no financial resources or wealth that they can look after themselves when you die. This is a misconception among Muslims where they say, not this, there is a misconception among Muslims where they say, Allah will provide, will provide them. It is absolutely true that Allah will provide them. But Allah also has already provided us these resources and the ability to work and He commanded us to do that. So anything which Allah commands us to do, it means we take some of that responsibility and the responsibility is to do our part. In the end, if Allah provides you from it or doesn't, that's in the hands of Allah. And everyone's provision is written, but you have to still work towards it. And even your working towards it is written. Allah facilitates everything fairly and justly. And the meaning of this verse is that some people, when they, before they die, they want to donate and give in charity all their wealth. Or they start giving their wealth to certain people than others. Or they name it for some of their children rather than others. Or they hide it or whatever it is. Allah is telling them, let them fear that they leave behind an offspring who will be barren and vulnerable. So fear Allah. Do you understand? Allah did not say, give your wealth away and don't worry about your children. I will provide them. No, no, no. Providing comes in two ways, that Allah provides you without you asking and He also provides you with you doing the effort. The Hadith Prophet is very clear, it says Allah will assist a person when they do the effort. Inheritance therefore is important. And how can you leave behind wealth for your children and family if you yourself are not wealthy and you yourself have not, doesn't seek? Now, we're not talking about people around the world who are disadvantaged because of the, the, the oppression and corruption of their governments, or because of war, or because of uh, circumstances, disasters. Those people, they have to be patient, and Allah subhanahu wa will still provide them. We're talking about people whom Allah subhanahu wa has given them security and safety in their land. Do you, have you heard of the companion named Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu? Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas is one of the elite companions. When I say elite, maybe the wrong word. One of the most important companions and the highest of the righteous among the earliest Muslims. And he was the uncle, the paternal uncle, the maternal uncle of the Prophet وسلم, And he embraced Islam early and he was one of the ten mentioned in the hadith in a row promised paradise. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was among the most affluent and wealthy companions among all the companions. His honor and his dignity was respected and revered, and he was a great help to the Muslim community with his wealth and his resources. In the farewell pilgrimage after the Prophet peace be upon him gave his sermon, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas became ill and he thought that he was going to die. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. So he said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he went to visit him, Ya Rasulullah, I feel that I'm going to die. And I have all this wealth. I am very comfortable with wealth. All I have is one daughter. Can I give two thirds of my wealth in charity to someone else and just leave a third for my daughter since I only have a daughter and a wife? The Prophet ﷺ said, no. No, don't do that. 
He said, how about a shatr, half, half of all my wealth, and I'll leave the rest for my daughter and my wife. He said, no, not allowed to do that. He said, how about a third? And Rasul Sallallahu said, if you want, you can donate a third, but even that is too much. In other words, it discouraged him. One daughter, one wife. Now, Salma Abi Waqqas who did live on, live on after that. And he had many children after his daughter. And subhanAllah, his wealth benefited the Muslims, benefited him, benefited his family. And the Prophet وسلم, he replied to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas saying, إِنَّكَ إِن تَذَرْ وَرَثَتَكَ أَغْنِيَاءَ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَن تَذَرْهُمْ عَالَ يَتَكَفَّفُونَ النَّاسِ For you to leave your family and children wealthy, independent financially from needing other people is much better to Allah and more beloved than to allow them to go and beg people and rely on the community to help them. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Now here is another thing. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet peace be upon him, used to seek refuge from poverty. Another misconception is people think that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam liked to be poor or that, or that he was poor. This is wrong. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam neither liked poverty nor was he poor. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose to have only the minimum finances for himself and his family and he always gave it away. He chose to be an ascetic, zuhd. Why? Because he's the role model and he's the messenger of Allah. My beloved brothers and sisters, Muslims can be rich and wealthy and there is no problem at all. Many people think that Muslims doesn't need wealth, they can be poor. If they become wealthy, they are not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have some sort of, you know, this negative thoughts about money and being wealthy. Money itself is not bad. The thing is what you do with money shows that you are doing it in good way or bad way. But money is not filthy. And Islam never tells people not to be rich. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't ask people to be poor. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who are strong, who are wealthy, who are doing something for the ummah. Rather than some lazy and weak, doing nothing. Allah loves the strong people. So try to be someone who uplifts the ummah with the wealth. You have to earn wealth. Otherwise, how will you go to Hajj? Otherwise, how will you give Zakat? These two important pillars of Islam can be done only if you have money. So, work hard to earn halal income. Every penny that you spend on your family members are also considered charity. When you have money, you can build masjid, you can build schools, you can build hospitals, you can reach out to others, you can serve the ummah, you can help those who are doing da'wah. And there are plenty of good things that you can do when you have money in your pocket. So work hard to earn halal income, to become rich, to become wealthy. Always have good thoughts when you want to earn income, when you want to have wealth and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with wealth don't use it to go against him use the money to please him and always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will increase in you help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description